Okay, and joining Mark now from New England Financial is managing partner Mike Amin. Mike is a registered financial consultant. He served on the board of the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors and is also the author of numerous financial industry related articles. Take it away, guys. How warm is that? That seat's getting hot. Is it? Okay. Well, let's get into a couple of hot topics long term care and annuities, and let's start and keep the theme with some definitions. Sure. What's long term care? In a general sense, long term care is your inability to perform two of the six uh, daily living activities. Uh, the things that we sometimes take for granted, such as eating, uh, bathing, uh, dressing, walking, or transferring, continence, um, or toileting. If uh, we're unable to perform two of the six and we qualify for some sort of long term care. All right, so I've had two or three of those this morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are my chances of needing long term care? Well, the good thing is that uh, people are living longer today due to medical technology and science, and, uh, but that also creates a problem um, uh, as life expectancy uh, for retirees are, are longer than it's triggering these types of disabilities. Uh, we probably know somebody within our families or uh, within our circle of friends uh, that have needed uh, some sort of assisted living uh, or in some cases nursing home because of dementia or or Parkinson's or, in, in those types of uh, um, disabilities. And uh, the concern is that 60 to 70 percent of uh, the population uh, could need some sort of either assisted living, home health care, or nursing home care sometime in the future. So that doesn't make it just possible, it makes it probable. It does. For a lot of folks. It does. All right, so we have the six items that qualify for some type of long term care. Uh, we have a higher probability, but don't we have, for example, Medicaid, Medicare that, that handle that for us? Well, that's the misnomer is that people think that they can just go on to Medicare or Medicaid. And the issue is that with uh, Medicare, it's really for short duration, uh, acute care, or some sort of skilled nursing uh, 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 treatment for up to 100 days. With Medicare, uh, I'm sorry, with Medicaid, you need to pretty much deplete your savings in order to qualify and uh, you're really limited within usually a 50 mile radius of the facilities you can use and really you have to pretty much deplete your savings in. and there's also a five year look back so that you can't just give it away uh, because then it will not allow you to qualify for Medicaid so that's what people need to know. All right so high probability of needing some type of assistance as we've yes. discussed it uh, Medicare and Medicaid there's not really a way out for that. That's correct. So what do we do? Well, uh, we can turn to either our savings, uh, and again, you can get wiped out depending on the severity, or we can go to a private insurance and purchase long-term care through a private insurance. In fact, one of the big issues uh, facing insurance companies is the probability of future claims. And uh, uh, so what you could do is, again, uh, make that as part of your uh, retirement budget and budget for it and buy it through a private uh, insurance company. Uh, as well as there's hybrid policies that you can purchase through annuities and life insurance. Long-term care insurance, most of us don't understand it. We don't know how to buy it. From a consumer standpoint, Mike, and from your expertise, what two or three points should we be sure that we get answers to when we're considering long-term care insurance? One of the first uh, things that I would consider is understand that not all policies are created equal. Uh, you really need to do your due diligence in making sure you understand the features, the benefits, and the costs as it relates to different insurance companies. Uh, look at the ratings of the companies and make sure that the ratings uh, have the claims paying ability. Uh, secondly, they should understand that premiums are not guaranteed and subject to change in the future. I've witnessed that over the last 10 years because of claims experience. Uh, note that the insurance companies have to file it with the state. Uh, in which they reside in order to increase that premium, but more than likely, uh, if they can justify it, you'll see an increase in premium. So you have to once again budget for not only the cost of the premiums, but also uh, increases. Uh, last but not least, you need to make sure that you're insurable. So I always tell people, like I own a long-term care policy, uh, and I thought that you know, in your 40s, well, why would you do that? Well, I want to make sure that I could take advantage of my good health and my wife's good health and to really start to plan for that, knowing that at some point in the future, one of us may need it. Um, so you have to make sure you're, you're healthy when you, uh, when you apply for it, because if you're not healthy, uh, then you become what the uninsurable and uh, a private insurance company will not provide you uh, the coverage. All right, so part of the theme of this program today is 
be informed, be aware, get control. So we need to be aware of a lot of things when it comes to looking at particular types of policies, in this case, long-term care. How about annuities? What is an annuity? Well, um, generally speaking, an annuity is an insurance contract offered through an insurance company that provides, uh, in some cases, protection of your asset. It also allows you to get some sort of tax-deferred growth as well as uh, 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 principal protection. And mainly, it provides a stream of income over time. Uh, in most cases, a, a stream of income that you can outlive. All right. We have three basic types of annuities. Can you define those and then describe them a little bit? Sure. Uh, well, you have your fixed annuities uh, that generally uh, give you a interest uh, for a specified period of time. Uh, the income in that case would be uh, scheduled and uh, fixed for that period of time, uh, assuming that you're doing it for income and not accumulation. Mm -hmm. The other type is a variable annuity that uh, has exposure to the market. So if you're looking for some uh, growth, uh, then a variable annuity could be the right choice. Um, it, uh, uh, when I first started uh, in the business many, many years ago, um, you know, we only had three or four choices for variable annuities. Today, there's, uh, you know, up to 60, 70, and maybe 80 separate accounts that really allow people uh, the asset allocation that they need and diversification that they need uh, to have the market exposure based on their risk tolerance, uh, their time horizon, and their goals and objectives. Uh, it, it, that's where a variable annuity could be a, uh, a potential fit. Um, and then last but not least, um, is the index annuities, could, which could also be uh, uh, a product that's not securities registered and that's considered a fixed product, uh, but uh, I, I think you have to do your due diligence uh, with all three annuities to determine, again, uh, specifically where it meets your goals and objectives. All right, so we have the fixed, we have the variable, and we have the indexed, which has a little twist to it in terms of how you participate with sure. the markets for particular guarantees. Sure. Correct? That's correct. All right, so more products. In, the annuities have changed quite a bit, haven't they, over the last 10 years? And so what might have been vilified 10 years ago, the insurance companies are getting more and more competitive, both from a feature standpoint as well as from a cost standpoint. So with that being said, how do I work one into my investment program or part of my overall portfolio? Well, I think, uh, once again, as you start to look at the, uh, the nuances that now uh, are features as, far as, uh, as, as part of the annuity programs, uh, one of, the, one of the, uh, the riders that have become very popular is a living benefit rider in which mm. uh, an insurance company could give you a fixed income for life. Uh, but once again, you have to do your due diligence and you have to understand the riders, the features, the costs that are associated uh, with those types of uh, annuity-based products. Uh, but a lot, again, has changed and uh, it's very important that, that you know what those, uh, uh, what, what those uh, features and benefits are as it relates to the riders. All right, so if I'm understanding this as a very practical matter, with an annuity, I can, in effect, create my own pension plan in addition to other assets that I have, and maybe, because you had mentioned earlier, we're living longer. Well, that's good news, correct. but it's also the bad news. That's we're correct. living longer. And the shortfall of perhaps outliving our money can be in part handled by perhaps an annuity, correct? That is correct. It really will fill the gap. Um, you know, we're used to getting Social Security, in some cases pensions, uh, and, and it's really, uh, it could be used as a retirement uh, income vehicle if you will, to provide that gap that's missing, to cover a lot of our fixed expenses so that we have some consistency in the stream of income. So they have become very, very popular as far as our retirement planning. All right, like with anything else, we need to be informed and aware. You're a professional, you deal with annuities. What is your best advice for what people need to know before they place a single dollar in an annuity? Well, they need to know the costs, uh, associated with annuities. Uh, they need to understand the expenses, uh, the uh, 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 issuing company and the ratings with the insurance, uh, with the uh, various uh, companies that offer them. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to know the surrender charges that are associated uh, with, the, uh, with these annuities and the, uh, and the penalties they would pay for uh, withdrawals, um, uh, especially full withdrawals. Uh, they need to know uh, uh, what the options and the features and benefits as, as it relates to riders mm -hmm. um, uh, are, you know, are concerned. 
and, and really, once again, sit down with a, a professional. Don't try to figure this out uh, on your own. Uh, you know, look uh, for a, uh, a trusted advisor. Uh, do your due diligence uh, to whom you're working with. Google them and do things, uh, I think, uh, you know, again, that are going to protect uh, you as a consumer. Mike, good stuff. And again, I'm sure, Christy, we have some questions, don't we? we absolutely do. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and tell us your name and what your question is. Hi, I'm Katrina. My question is, what is a single premium immediate annuity and how does it work? That's a great question. Uh, in fact, uh, what a single uh, premium media annuity is uh, very similar to what a lot of pensions are funded with. It's the ability to take a lump sum of money uh, and give it to an insurance company and it will typically provide you an income for life, one that you, you, you can't outlive. And uh, uh, in its best form, that's what a single premium media annuity does. It provides an income stream for life and it's issued by, once again, an insurance company. All right, but what's important to note with that is when you buy a single premium annuity, you're giving all the marbles over to the insurance company and they're giving you an income stream. So that being said, it's probably best to use that income stream to cover essentials. Would you agree with that? I would 100% agree. Um, and one of the things that uh, people need to also understand is once you do that, you give up the control, uh, you do have the income for life, and it is used for your fixed expenses. But understand that it typically does not adjust for inflation. Mm, very good point. Right, Christy. Yeah, we have another question over here. Go ahead, tell us your name and your question. I'm Bob, and I'm just wondering how safe annuities are as an investment, whether or not uh, my principal is guaranteed or I'll get it back if the company goes broke halfway through. Well, certainly over the last few years, we've been very, very concerned about the safety and the security of our dollars and the institutions that we give it over to. Fair question. Yes, it is a fair question. Again, the, depending on the type, uh, especially when you start to look at uh, a variable annuity, your principal may not be guaranteed. But at death, in a market decline, and again, one of the things we can't predict is our mortality, so uh, the principal typically uh, is going to be protected at death. Um, and in some cases with fixed annuity, the principal is protected. And in some cases, again, depending on the issuing uh, company, uh, your principal can't be protected uh, even in a, in a variable annuity. Uh, but that's going to vary from company to company. And that's part of the cost that we call riders. And that so is. for as a consumer, smart consumer, am I willing to pay a little bit more for this rider for some of the other benefits and some of the other protections? That is correct. It's almost like insuring your investment. And in today, with the volatility that are in the markets and the uncertainty in the markets, annuity have uh, you know made a large play in not you know in re in retirement income as 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 also preparing and accumulating. All right, this uh, is popular. Let's get another question from Chris. Yeah, actually, a quick question from me uh, for Mark and Mike. You've talked a lot about long-term care insurance. Are there other types of insurance that we should consider? Absolutely. You know, we, uh, I think, uh, you know, you want to take the approach of holistic planning. So there's some gaps uh, and uh, some of the areas that you have to be concerned is at around life insurance and making sure that you have the proper amount of life insurance uh, to protect your loved ones. And typically life insurance and the number one reason why people buy life insurance is to protect the income of a breadwinner. The other uh, 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 popular insurance is the protection of your income, and that is in the form of disability coverage. And again, if you don't have the assets and if you become disabled, how would you have that continuous paycheck? So disability coverage is another uh, uh, element to the overall uh, financial plan.